Jira is the most popular project management system and a bug tracking system in the entire world. And that's exactly why I've decided to record a video and quickly show you the very main functionality of Jira for people who are likely to be working in the world of software development, as I've been working in this world for the last decade of my life. So let me quickly introduce myself, and then we're gonna get started. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. But these days, I'm helping people like you to become a QA engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. And I'm the founder of Comify Bootcamp. Now, let's get started and learn what Jira is and how can you use it. Whenever you're going to navigate to Jira, you will see probably a list of projects you have access to. But don't get too worried about it if you see too many of those right here. Because usually your team will specify which project you're working on. So let's say we're working on a Comify project. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to get navigated to this sprint board or a scrum board. So this is the board where your team will collaborate. And this is pretty much a table with four columns. And those are the most important pieces of it for this moment. In the first column, we have to do label which means that this column is for software developers or any other team members to keep a list of bug reports or tasks that they have to work on. For example, we have a software developer called AG or Alex Gontro. And this guy needs to create a new login page. So I'm going to click here and I will see the details of this ticket or this task. This title says create new login page, which is pretty understandable for a human being, right? the dev got to create a new login page. And you can read the description, you can read the requirements for the design, for the buttons, for the display error messages, passwords must be masked, security, etc. It has a lot of details and it even has a screenshot. By the way, this is a dummy one, but just in case I took a screenshot so you guys could see how devs seeing this. So this ticket contains this image and developer starts reading it opens up a ticket and says like, okay, so this is how exactly it gotta look like. So the dev will create the ticket, which will look like this. And this image should have been coming from the design design team. So the dev would exactly know how it look like, would look like from the designer's perspective. So imagine this, dev starts working on it and dev moves this ticket to in progress. So now you, for example, a designer, QA engineer, project manager, or product owner, you know that a dev is working on it. Awesome. What happens next after dev is done? Well, dev will move it to in QA status, and then this will be a prime time for the QA engineer to start working on this ticket. And usually someone will assign the ticket to QA engineer. Let's say Sergey Kromchenko is our QA engineer. So I'm going to assign QA assignee. Now I am, as the QE engineer, I would open it up and see, okay, Sergi assignee, so this is for me. So I will go to the website and I will open up the page. By the way, devs will specify the, the URL for the page. I will open it up, I will go through all of these requirements and I will make sure that the dev did the same job as we expected to do on a page. So the login page should look like this and should function in a way it's specified here. So imagine this, I'm a QA engineer, I verified it, what do I do next? Well, I would simply move it to done status. And that would mean that, okay, this ticket is ready to be released to the rest of the world. The QA team did verify it. So now this login page in a period of some time, it should be visible for users. But release is a separate process that I do not want to touch right at this moment. Okay, let's continue. We have a couple of more tickets. The second one is for the designer. Design new UI for the registration. It usually goes through the same flow with the only one difference. QA team usually does not check the design. that will be checked by, the, by someone else, such as other designer or product owner. But in some companies, it could be even checked by the QA engineers as well. It all depends, guys. Please remember that Jira is very configurable and Thousands of different people, thousands of different companies are using it in thousands of different ways. But I'm showing you one of the most popular ones in the world. So let's say you went through it in QA and then it's also in a down status. Awesome. And we've got this red one here. 
When you mouse hover, you will see it's called a bug or it's a bug report. So myself or Sergey Kromchenko did find a bug and it was reported. So now you can see that user can't make a payment without a middle name. Oh shoot, that's the bug, so it gotta be fixed. So it would go through exactly the same process as a task. But the difference is tasks are usually created by the product owners, by people who talk to customers, by people who think and come up with ideas for the new features, just like updating user interface on the registration page, for example. And bug reports are usually found by the QA engineers or software testers or quality assurance engineers. Awesome. So this is pretty clear, right? Oh, if you guys did not hit that big fat thumb up button below, did not subscribe to our channel, make sure to do so. And also follow our Instagram and a Telegram communities where I share many more updates that I can legally do on YouTube. Links are right below this video. Let's continue. This is the most popular setup, I would say the most simplified and popular setup in the world, but it could be used in a quite a few different ways. The columns here are configurable. The names are configurable, the ticket types are configurable, and inside of the ticket you will see also a lot of fields that I can show you guys that are also configurable. First of all, assignee is usually a person who's supposed to work on a ticket. QA assignee, which is a custom field, is for the person who's supposed to test the ticket or verify the quality. Priority means that how fast it gotta be fixed. Severity means how bad is this issue. And you'll see a lot of other fields, such as labels, which is related to login, so we label it as the login parent ticket. This one doesn't have any parent tickets, so it's not related to anything. Team, etc., etc. And sprint. By the way, guys, I will, I will get to sprint in a moment. A story points estimate. A lot of teams will use different estimation for the tickets. For example, if the software developer got to work on this ticket and the software developer thinks it's going to take five hours. Usually, companies convert point, uh, hours into points and they, they can say, for example, let's convert it one to one. So it's going to be five points. Uh, and now, that whenever, whenever people, whenever the team is planning an entire sprint, whenever play, team is getting together every two weeks to put a lot of tickets on this board, they will think how many points can developer take on during two weeks. So if the dev can take max 40 points, they will do they will do ticket estimation up to 40 points, and those are only going to be the tasks for the dev, so the dev would not get overloaded. That's called the story points estimation. By the way, if you guys are interested in trying yourself as the QA engineer for almost free for an entire week, I've created an introduction course that helps people like you to give it a shot and see if you're going to like that job, if you're going to like that career and a bootcamp. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave a link right below this video. Let's continue. You guys probably got already exhausted, but I'm going to continue and show you one more part of this puzzle that is pretty important for you guys to know, and then I'm gonna let you go, which is a backlog. So whenever you're working on a sprint, on a two-week period, let's say, by the way, we have nine days left in this period, and then we can complete the sprint afterwards. Whenever you're working on this sprint, you'll see all the tickets related to it here. But whenever product owners or QA engineers are creating some tickets or bug reports and they don't want them to appear here, they want them to be in the backlog, so sometime in the future, we could come back and work on those tickets, they would put it directly in a backlog. And I have a couple of dummy tickets for you guys, so you could see how it looks like. So currently we have one sprint, which is from October 31st until November 14th. This is our active sprint, and you can see done, done, to do, right? If we go back to board, you will see done, done, and to do. So backlog will also show, show you current sprint and, and the tickets for the future sprint, which are in the backlog. So they will be behind the scenes whenever you create a ticket and you don't specify the sprint, they will fall right here into the backlog. And let me quickly show you an example of that. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to select issue type bug. By the way, there are a lot of types and those are also configurable. You can change them, but we're going to work only with the two main ones. So let's say email should be unique upon, uh, should be unique field upon registration. We got some, let's say we filled it out with some dummy details, automatic assignment, and we're going to leave the, uh, we're going to leave a sprint empty. We're not going to select the current sprint. 
and I'm going to click create. When I do this, the ticket doesn't appear here. You see that some changes are saved, but issue is invisible because it is in the backlog. It's not in the board. So if I go to the backlog, you will see that now we have three tickets here. And here's the third one. Email should only be unique filled upon registration. And if you want this to become active, you can do it in two ways. I mean, if you want this ticket to be a part of the sprint, you can either just simply move it here, just like that. And you gotta confirm that this will affect the scope or the amount of story points in the sprint. As soon as we move it, now it is in the current sprint. And if I go to the back, back to the board, you'll see it in to do. In the same way, you could do it by simply adding a sprint right here. Or you, could, you can put it back into backlog simply by removing it. So let me do this. It should disappear here. Boom, close it. And now in a few seconds, it should disappear. Or I might have to reload a page to see that. Let me, no, oh, I did not have to. So it, it disappeared and it went back to the backlog. So now you guys can see that. All the tickets in a sprint are here. All of the backlog is there. Cool. Now imagine this. We are finally done. Let's say devs worked on everything. QA has tested everything. The sprint is over. So what do we do? We go to the backlog and we complete the sprint. Usually it's done, it's done by the product owner or whoever runs the sprint. So we're going to, let's see, create a respective for the sprint. No, we're not going to create a respective. It's going to be a little bit too much to go through one simple video. Great, our sprint is over and there are no tickets. As soon as that is done, you guys will see that our board is empty and those tickets do not exist here anymore. You can still search for them in the search, but they don't exist on the board or in the backlog. And if you want to create a new sprint, which will usually be done before the new sprint starts, you simply uh, click create a new sprint. You see that a new sprint has been created right here. I'll uh, say November 12th. Oh, actually, we already had one automatically created and we just created a second one. So let's remove this. I'm not going to video edit it. I'm going to show it to you guys so you could see how it's done. And then you can choose an entire backlog if you want to, and you can move all of them to the current sprint. And then you can start it. So from November 14th, let's say, because we, we had one from October 31st until November 14th. And then from November 14th until November 28th, we're going to create a brand new sprint. The duration is going to be two weeks. The name is going to be default. Start date. It shows us the default date of today, but imagine it is November 14th and we are, uh, and we have finished our previous sprint. So we're going to start it from 14th as it is today. And we're going to click it. Perfect. All the tickets from the backlog are back here. And our sprint is now now has started and you see that the backlog is now empty. Awesome. These are the main features and the pieces of functionality I wanted to quickly show you guys. These are the very basics. If you want to learn more, simply leave a comment right below this video and I'll be more than glad to record more videos for you.